At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first ever episode of the Playbook Podcast. My name is Zach, this is my co-host Jerry, and we're here to talk about everything from the gridiron to the hardwood and all the way out to the octagon. Hopefully you have fun with us, and let's get right into the episode. And thanks for joining us today. And like Zach said, I'm Jared, and uh, let's just let's just start breaking down some possible sleeper quarterback picks for this year's fantasy draft. I feel that, I feel that. I've got a couple names, I... I one is a far shot. I think he's just a backup dude, but I think there could be some, you know, some solid games in there. Okay. But but the other one that I have to start off with is the battle in Carolina with Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. I think Baker Mayfield gets the job, and I think he wins it handily. Everyone knows he's getting it. It's Sam Darnold. He saw a ghost in New York. Cam Newton came out of retirement, basically, to Cam Newton up, whatever, have one good game, and the rest was just, uh uh-huh. CMC could be a little bit healthy to help Baker Mayfield, but that if CMC is healthy and stays healthy, Baker Mayfield could look like a legend just because of CMC. But he, he's a glass a glass back. Like I, I'm with you on that. But but talking about the quarterback though himself, I think I think Baker Mayfield could be a really good backup choice for a bye week due to the fact that he's going to be playing angry. It depends on matchups, too, if they're playing a stout defense. He got replaced by someone with 24 allegations of sexual assault. I'm pissed that you kicked me out of my team for that. That He's not even going to play. So I, I think I think Baker Mayfield could be that sneaky quarterback this year that throws some points up because he's pissed. You want me to tell you who I think is a super sneaky, uh, sneaky quarterback? Let's hear it. You might call me a fanboy. I don't care. Trevor Lawrence. We saw what he did in that first quarter. In that preseason. Yes, it is preseason. Don't get me wrong. But it's year two. It's year two under a new coach. A coach that was a quarterback. Exactly. And with Zay Jones, that timing, you can't just get that during off season. So either they've been working extra lately, and that wide receiver room kind of stepped up a notch with the addition of Zay Jones and Christian Kirk. And with the emergence of Travis Etienne coming back from that awful injury. I was about to say, because if I'm not mistaken... Um, Trevor Lawrence took his new wide receiver core down. Was it to the Bahamas? Uh, somewhere in the Caribbean, yeah. And, and, and had workouts with him. So, I mean, I, I'm with you. I, I like Trevor Lawrence. I Look, you know me. I'm a big Bills fan. But, like, I Jacksonville has some, some sneakiness going on. I like them sneakily. So, I, don't, I'm not, I think you guys get out of the top five picks this year. No, we got to keep that streak going. I'm, I'm just saying. But moving on, my, my sneaky sneaky – is Davis Mills. I I know, call me crazy. Call me crazy. Third <laughs> round pick out of Stanford last year. He wasn't beautiful as a quarterback, but look at the team. But look what they've added around him this year. Okay? <laughs> and, 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 and their second receiver is Nico Collins, another one that they love in Houston. I'm telling you, watch watch Nico Collins and watch Brandon Cooks gain some points because of, of Davis Mills. I just really don't see... Like, just the emergence of Davis Mills. I feel like he's a just, hey, you got one year. Just hopefully you don't get injured there, bud. 
we're going for that Bryce. I don't think so. I, 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 I would love to say that because it would be a smart move. But what I, I guess what I'm getting to is like they made a very good point the other day about uh, all the Alabama quarterbacks that come out. Not many of them have been that good. I mean, the last couple have been. But the thing is, though, like Justin Fields said, his receivers in college were night and day better than the receivers he has in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So you got to understand, a, 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 a Davis Mills is used to not five five star uh, wide receivers per se in college. But he's not used to NFL style defense either from the Pac twelve. I mean, he did pretty good. He did pretty good last year for what he had. Uh, I mean, what, so they what, want they won four. They won four. But what I'm trying to get to though is with a team that had like no offensive line. No, nothing. Basically, it was like basically a bunch of, hey, let's go down to Walmart and, and pick some people out to play football. It seemed like. I see. Here's the one guy that I see no one talking about, like being a big guy. And that is Matt Ryan with Indianapolis. Matt Ryan is consistent. He has been consistent, basically his whole career. And now, he's last year he didn't really have. A squad, he had, what, Kyle Pitts, who couldn't score besides in England? Yeah. Now he has Michael Pittman Jr., uh, Doyle, Jonathan Taylor. He has a squad with a great offensive line. And this is kind of like... But does he Kirk Cousins it? I don't think he Kirk... Have all the have all the pieces to the puzzle, but just cannot do it. He, I don't know, man. I'm just like... I mean, Matty, Matty Ice has been to the, to the promised land and was up big. But... Mm, you I see mean, what I'm saying? That... That's the old Brady. I'm with you, though, but like what I'm saying, though, is like the Matt Ryan reminds me a lot of Kirk Cousins. He's got some pieces, but just like he's like 50 50 average. Like he's. I, I mean, I, I can't say, good, but I'm with you. I would take, take Matt Ryan over Davis Mills. Oh, for sure. And, and But you also got to think what type of league are we going to play in? If you're playing in an eight man league, 10 man league, 12 man league, like you got to figure out, like, you get okay. you, if you're getting above a 12 man league, then you're looking at your Davis Mills. Davis and, and, and you're looking. Well, I mean, think about it. You know, because he's going to be your backup quarterback potentially, because you're going to need two quarterbacks, one for bye week. Yeah, I, I I can see that. Well, but anyways, with all the fun of talking about quarterbacks and all that, we got to get into the hefty boys. You know, the guys that actually tote the rock, and that is the running backs the in this buses. league. So, my first sleeper running back that I have personally, it is A.J. Dillon from the Green Bay Packers. We all know Aaron Jones ahead of him. He gets most most of the reps as, as a guy. But A.J. Dillon, he's just that bruiser back that, hey, we are so you're, at the two-yard line. So, you're basically saying run both running backs in your league. Oh, for sure. Like for sh- starting every week? Not starting every week. you got to see how that – what defensive play, and most fantasy players, they look at that stuff. They're like, okay. So look at the matchup. Look at the matchup. If you see that they got really good outside defenders, really good linebackers that can cover the field but can't really fill in them gaps, that's the time you need to start A.J. Dillon. Because A.J. Dillon's going to right off, right off guard, right off guard, get you four or five yards a pop, son. Because there's some teams like that, like Atlanta. Atlanta really ain't got a stout front seven. They don't. And But there's other teams. You just got to look at the matchups, and I think this is a time that A.J. Dillon really makes it like, hey. So year I'm, three is his year to shine. Oh, it, it's going to be because who else does he have on offense besides Lazard? And or Cobb. Aaron Jones. I mean, I'm with you. I One I have on my list, and again – it's going to almost sound like I'm a fanboy for this team, but Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans. Oh, my God. I don't know why I'm picking so many Texans. Because no but one expects what, them. But what I'm saying, though, is like watching his film during training camp and during the first preseason game that I got to see him move, the dude is ma- making holes where there should be no holes. He's running people over. I think if you could snag him up around – I don't know. I did a mock draft the other day with a 10-man team. or Oh, it was an 8-man league. We did an 8-man league uh, mock draft the other day, and I got him in the in the 16th round. So if you could sneak him in like anywhere from 14 to 16, I, I'm telling you, next year you'll look like a genius. Uh, you might look like a genius, and you don't waste a pick on it because who really 
Everybody cares between that 14 and 16 slot. Well, imagine if you're in a keeper league and, and you and you pick him up between 14 and 16 and he has a stellar year. Now you only lose a, a potential like seventh round next year for someone you got in the 14th round. And you know he's going to be above a seventh round pick next year. Oh, well, potentials. Potentials. There, There's potentials with that whole Houston team, there in is. all honesty, just because no one expects them to be – they expect them in Atlanta to be at the bottom of the pack. Like, oh, uh, well, who's going to win that first overall pick? <laughs> who's our top five going to shake out like? Exactly. Atlanta, Detroit, Jax. I just, I I think he would be a great late round pickup to stash on your roster. I know, I know we haven't heard a lot from this guy in the past couple years, but here's a guy that, me personally, I am somewhat high on. And that is Melvin Gordon the third, with the pickup of Ru- Russell Wilson. That's going to expand that offense a lot more to create more opportunities for running backs like Melvin Gordon, who saw success with the Chargers. But digress back, just because look what teams he's been on. He hasn't really been on any powerhouse teams, any teams that could really spread the field out type deal. Now, with Russell Wilson coming out, they can spread the field with the Cortland Suttons and all that and then make them running holes because they they don't know what's going to happen with this offense because last year, what, it was Teddy Two Gloves? Yeah, but you also you also got to think about Javante Williams in that lineup. Oh, Javante Williams is good, but I feel like they're going to be a one-two combo. <clears throat> yeah, and plus this is year two of Javante Williams, so I see – I see him getting a heavier workload than he did last year. So I, I think that's going to be – I think that would be a great pickup. To, one, as a backup to Javante, because I think Javante is going to take over that lead role this year. One. You think so? I think so because they drafted him. We'll see, we'll see how that we, – we've seen draft picks not get used. I So I would say my – I've got two pairs, if you will, uh, on, my, on my last two. And they're off the same teams. So my sneakies this year, and, and the one is because they refreshed their whole offensive line, and it's because I think they want to add a run game to what they have. And that's uh, Devin Singletary and James Cook. I like Singletary because he's gotten better with his footwork, and he's and he's got a better offensive line with him this year. So And I don't think they want to run Josh as much because they're paying him a, a, a tote load of money. So you're not going to want that dude running all the time. So, and James Cook. I think James Cook could be that sneaky, like, James White-ish type of back like at New England had. And my, my other two was James Robinson and Travis Etienne. I, I think that duo in Jacksonville could have a stellar year this year. And I think you can pick up all four of them running backs potentially um, after the fourth round. Etienne's going to be, like, that third to fourth round guy, I think, yeah. because you have, you have fanboys that will go get him. But I, I think without seeing anything from him yet, I think he should slide down to like, you know, fourth and under round. But uh, I think you get all four of those running backs after the fourth round, and they'd be great additions. I, I see ETN being a second, third, just because the connection with Trevor Lawrence and what we did see in that preseason game, he ate. Son, he ate, even though, like I said before, it is preseason. So you can't really put all your eggs in your basket on a preseason game. Plus, he was injured last year. Oh, he was. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I think he could be that second to third round guy, but with no work last year and just a preseason so far this year, I I would I would I wouldn't want to draft him in the top three rounds because it, it, I don't know yet. But I, I would definitely grab him after the fourth round. I I, I couldn't agree with that. If he's there. If he's there. So, on let's let's move on to some pass catchers. Some pass catchers. You know the boys that make it all happen. That wants the big money. Big money. The big money. Ooh, big money year for wide receivers. Oh God, it was awful. My first sleeper, though, is going to have to be Rashad Bateman. Again, I think Rashad Bateman is going to be that dog in Baltimore because Hollywood Brown's gone. Oh, he, he Hollywood good. Brown, I think they said Hollywood Brown averaged, whenever he was there, like 145 receptions a year. So yeah. what I'm trying to say is they don't have another receiver to get that, and they didn't go find another receiver. They drafted Bateman in the first round. So, like, 
they're not going shopping right now. They're they're gonna put their money with this dude, and I think he's gonna. It might not be 145 receptions for him this year, but you gotta understand, just like Etn, he didn't do preseason last year. He didn't do the first six weeks because he was injured. Mm-hmm. So he, he got limited work with with Lamar last year, and then he went to what was it Huntley, the backup in Baltimore. Yeah, and Huntley and uh, Mark Andrews was the main. Well, Mark Andrews is going to be the main guy, but what I'm saying though is that as a wide receiver component, I think that Rashad Bateman being the number one, you could get him after the fourth round. I, I think you could get him after the, the, the seventh round, to be honest with you, because of how deep this class is. You could get him after the seventh round, and that's, that's a number one dude. That is a number Yeah, I'm thinking about it, that is. If he can stay healthy. If he can stay healthy. Well, he stayed healthy whenever he came back. He didn't get injured again. That was an injury from college. Oh, yeah. that's why he didn't get to do that front half of the season. Mm-hmm. So what? I, just like just just like Williams is gonna have to do with Detroit. Oh yeah, he, you know, he, what I'm saying he tore tore his ACL, so now he's not gonna be able to play for like the first so many weeks of the season. So that was the same thing with Bateman last year. But whenever he came back, he was on like when he had to he would get open and get the ball. So I think Bateman's one that you could get after the fifth round, and and he would be a beautiful you, you placement. Would, you would ha- be happy with that. Mine, I gotta give love back out there to them old Denver Broncos. Jerry Judy's gonna have a bounce back year. I agree. Jerry Jerry Judy, to me, I, I am an Alabama fan at heart, so gotta love them Bama boys. A lot of them. But like I was saying with Melvin Gordon earlier, the quarterback situation changes that whole dynamic. Mm-hmm. You're going from a a C a C C minus C plus. I mean, player in Teddy Two Gloves. You you can call it a D. It's okay. No, no, I like I like Teddy Two Gloves. Like he he's he is a good quarterback. If you don't have anything, yeah, he's one of them guys. Like oh, our quarterback got hurt. Teddy, let's go. But with uh, Russell Wilson coming in, like Jesus Christ, you got you, and with you, that you line, got you got a, you got a top seven quarterback. Oh, you got a beautiful pickup for a quarterback, and it's just like now he doesn't have to worry about running for his life anymore. Because Pete Carroll's not like, oh, well, what's that thing in front of the quarterback? We don't need it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just throw dummies in there. Oh, he ran He ran for his life all over the place. But, no, I I, I, I like the Jerry Judy pick. I mean, bo- I think both receivers in Denver will, will um, greatly increase in, in value when it comes to fantasy football just because of Russell Wilson. Yeah, and I feel like Jerry Judy over Cortland something just for the simple fact of, I feel like Jerry Judy's a better route runner. Potentially. Potentially. We will see this year. I just think uh, Cortland Sutton's got a little bit of size on Jerry Judy, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he has a little bit of size, a little bit slower, but a lot stronger. So he's he's more of the up-in-the-air grab. He's more like, hey, ball. we're 15 yards from the end zone. Yeah. Go to the corner, make this play. Jerry Judy's like, hey, get open, try to make a play in the open field. I like Jerry Judy. I, I like that pickup. And I mean, where's Jerry Judy going in this draft? I I would say seven eighth. Really, seven eighth. Because you got to think this wide receiver class is deep. I mean, would you would you put DK over Jerry Judy? Just for the simple fact of we don't know what quarterback they're going to bring out. No. So you're saying DK goes later than the seventh round? If you see what I'm saying, it's so it's so tricky. Some leagues because you got some people who. You got the younger audience like, oh my gosh, DK Swolecast. Like, I want him. He he I seen that picture where he looked buff. But then you got other people like, well, what does that team present? Because they ain't got a quarterback. Lord. They just <laughs> took so, Denver's quarterback. <laughs> so let's go let's go to a team that has a quarterback but no offensive line. Oh Lord. The Chicago Bears. Oh, Jesus. Darnell Mooney. Darnell Mooney. He's a stash guy after the seventh round. You must have. I don't. I, I hate to say this, but I do not. After like the, at, I'm sorry, not seventh. Let's let's take that back. After the tenth round. The Six. reason why I say that is because it's Justin Fields' favorite target. Is it he his only target? Probably. <laughs> Probably. But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about who would be a good stash. Oh, I, and I think Darnell Mooney would be a great stash, and and that's just because. Of the connection between Fields and Mooney, like like a 10, 15 point type of game guy. Now, if he could, dude, if he could put up ten to fifteen points, he's a starter. He's a starter for you. I, I mean, depending on how deep your league is, hell, if he's scoring ten to fifteen points, that could that that makes a break stuff, man. I had, I had, 
I had first and second round receivers that got less than that some weeks last year. And I was, oh, don't you know, do. Tyree Kill. But, but you see what I'm saying, though. If, if, if Darnell Mooney puts up 10 to 15 points, bro, he's, he's, he's a, a fifth rounder better. Think about I, it. I, I can see that in a 10 to 12 man, but an eight man league. Eight man league, he might not get drafted until the very end. He, he might be a pickup. He might be a pickup. Because of the team he's on. But what I'm saying, though, is like in a, in a 10 man or later, he might be a good stash. He, I, I can honestly say that. Now, a, a young guy. Just got drafted that no quarterback again. But hey, Say gotta it. love this guy. Say it. Drake London. Ah oh, I I like Drake London. I was hoping you'd say a different name, but I like Drake London. He's big. Uh he he's big and he has surprising speed. Who are you thinking of? George Pickens. <laughs> DK situation. DK thought he should have went higher in the draft, right? Yep. George Pickens thought he should have went higher in the draft. There was 10 wide receivers drafted in front of George Pickens. There was eight in front of DK. I'm telling you, watch George Pickens come out. Pissed off. See, I like Drake London more than George Pickens. I like Drake London. It's a great, He would be a great later round pickup because he's a rookie. And he has. he's in Atlanta. He's in Atlanta. He's like an only target compared to, with Kyle Pitts. Now, if you look at the Pittsburgh situation as well, though, no quarterback, just like Atlanta. And they shipped off all the receivers last year, basically. The only thing they kept was Chase Claypool. Oh, well, don't get me started on Claypool. But, but, but going back to Drake London, I love the size. I, I love the hands. And he's used to a, a ton of perceptions being at USC. Oh, exactly. And he's used to being under that big-name spotlight as a USC, even though USC is not a powerhouse in college, it, per se. But the but the tradition, the tradition, and, and the people that are fans of USC is a there's a lot and the pressure. I, I I agree with you on that. Well, I know we've been talking about sleepers, and all that, throwing some shots at some some football teams, but I want to really get deep into this divisions, conferences, and all that. And today we're going to be talking about the AFC and starting off with the weird AFC North. Starting, I'm going to, I'm going to announce the elephant in the room to begin with. The Cleveland Browns. We don't know how long Deshaun Watson, because the uh, NFL wants to wants his head on a stick. Oh man, which he, de- he deserves to have his head on a stick. I mean, six games for that. Six games, and then the atrocity he throws in the preseason. You smoke a joint, and you're gonna be suspended all season. But let, let's just say, let's just say them six games. Them six, they stick with six games. They they probably win what? What would you say? About. Two or three. Let me let me look at the schedule real quick. I'll be honest with you. I think Cleveland will be the third best or last place in this division when it's all said and done this year. So the first six games. Let's see. And then I mean, because the only thing Cleveland really has right now is Nick Chubb and Nick Chubb. Now they got Amari Cooper. And they got Nick Chubb. <laughs> and Kareem Hunt. And Nick Chubb. I mean, that's all they have. Kareem Hunt wants out because they won't give him a bigger contract. So what, why is he going to want to play? One, and then two. Amari Cooper is kind of cooped out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm he, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, he started off in Las Vegas. He was yeah okay. Yeah, he had some big moments, and he got a big deal with Dallas, and he did some big things with Dallas. I mean, to me, it wasn't spectacular, but it was you know he did decent fantasy wise. But I, I just I don't see. Amari Cooper being the big Amari Cooper that he should be. And I, 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 the only thing I think Cleveland really has anymore is Nick Chubb. They got rid of everything. So I'm, I'm looking at their schedule right now. I see one, two, three, possibly, three, possibly four wins if Deshaun Watson's gone for six games. They, they, first six, in the first, first six games, you got the Carolina Panthers. Decent defense. New York Jets. God awful defense. Pittsburgh. Great defense. Atlanta. God awful defense. The Chargers. Great defense. And your favorite team, the New England Patriots. I hate to say it, but great defense typically. Well, I I, I agree with you on that, but what I guess what I'm saying because they're gonna have Jacoby Brissett, but I, I think when it's all said and done, I think he's suspended all season and Cleveland comes in last place. And the AFC North. If, if if how I see it, if they get that indefinite suspension. Cleveland is back to the bottom of the AFC North. Cleveland the, gets sold to London. Oh, the next team 
which I have actually winning the AFC North, and it's not the Bengals. It is the Baltimore Ravens. It's funny you say that because I have them as either the 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 number one or the number two in this division. Because last year, last year was kind of a weird season because everyone and their mom got injured. Holy Jesus. Oh my. They, they their 53-man probably... roster at the beginning was, I think there was maybe one name on it that was the same at the end of the season. Oh, and it, it, you, you hate to see that with a team, especially with a talented team like that. They did lose a big name in Hollywood Brown and all that stuff. I, I think they were happy to get rid of him because they are a running, a run first team. They are a run first team, and then Lamar Jackson. I have him as a top eight quarterback. I I do as well, but the only thing I have about Lamar right now, money. They haven't paid this man yet. Why and, Why would you go out and potentially really injure your body before you get paid and you're a top eight guy? It, I mean, hear me on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but how many how many playoff games has he won? I mean, touche. But a big fat goose egg. You can win MVP all you fucking want. I I, I I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll, I'll give you that. I feel like performance on the field outplays accolades. Because let's be honest, Lamar Jackson when he bursted onto the scene at first. Well, then explain to me why Kyler Mur- Murray got the contract he got. Because. He's a little crying baby that just scrambles around the field. And what I'm saying, though, is he got his paycheck. What I'm saying about Lamar Jackson, though, is Lamar Jackson is being too, too nice. That dude, if I had Lamar Jackson on my team, I'd be so thankful. Oh, for sure. He has not asked for money at all. And that's a lot different than what we're seeing in the league this year. But I, that's, I feel like this team, they have a goal this year. Like, I understand later on I'm about to talk about the Bengals. Bengals, they made it to the promised land. They couldn't they couldn't produce. We could say some questionable plays, but whatever. But I feel like the Ravens, they're sitting in that locker room right now. We're like, we are the best team in, in this division. And we're about to prove it this year. Last year we were all injured. They got a fire under their ass. I mean, they got two good running backs. They got a really good wide receiver in Bateman, and they got a great tight end in Andrews. And they got a pretty stout defense. And they got a great quarterback. Exact, all perfect success. If they don't, if make they it can to, put it together, if they don't make it to the conference championship, something's got to change. So you're saying Baltimore's playing somebody in the championship game right now? In the conference championship, really? I have Baltimore up there. AFC South or AFC North is going to put someone in the championship game. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then speaking about that, I have the Bengals. The Bengals, they were young, hungry last year. They shocked the world. No one expected the Bengals to make the Super Bowl. Besides what? The players in the locker room and some diehard fans? Potentially. Potentially. And they have a good team. They have a great team, bro. Uh, oh, my God. The roster is they're three, I mean, their they're, they're third string wide receiver, Tyler Boyd, is a serviceable Starter, serviceable starter, or an excellent as slot, a third string, or an excellent two guy. That's what I'm saying. Like he's a W. He's he's a wide receiver. He, he's a wide receiver, low two, high high three that could potentially start every week. Like, and that says something. You know what I'm saying? Because like they got Jamar Chase, which you know he's obviously guaranteed starter. T Higgs is. I would assume he's a guaranteed starter. You know what I'm saying? So, I, and they they. They made improvements to the line, and they made imp- improvements on the other side of the ball in defense. And they got they got two decent running backs. Joey, Joey Mixon, you know what I'm saying? Like he's old Mix. He he's he's Bombay, and and then our backup is really good too. So like I I I see Cincinnati coming in first or second in that division once again. You see Cincinnati coming in first or second. See that's how I see if if Baltimore, who I'm projecting to win that division. Don't make it. It's going to be Cincinnati. But I just have that much faith in Seattle. That's what I'm saying. Cincinnati and Baltimore are fighting for the first, and then Pitt and Cleveland is fighting for the last. And now let's talk about the old man in the background who's just talking about his old accolades. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Gosh, what a fall from grace. I don't know, man. Did you know that they're the only – when's the last time they had a losing season? It was before Mike Tomlin. 2003. And that was – They're the only team in the NFL to have – a record like that. And you mean tell what's happened? I don't think they're going to have a losing season this year. I don't think they will either. But they're going to be third place in their, that division. Okay, so they beat out Cleveland. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, I, who's their starter? I think it's Trubisky just to start out with. Before yeah, you Trubisky, get Kenny like, can he, can he get under, like, get just, some more practice reps with the practice squad, get used to that timing and all. Because we could both agree, college and NFL speed, night and day. I just feel bad for Mason Rudolph. Yeah, I don't really feel bad for him. He's been there that whole time. Done took a shot at the head with from a from a murderer. You know, what I'm saying last year, and I mean, I mean, was that last year? or The year before now? Year before. It's already been two years. <laughs> oh, but what yeah. I'm saying though is like, you know, I I think with the additions of George Pickens, you got Najee last year. You know, what I'm saying now you got you got Mitch Trubisky that can move around the pocket. I dude. Solid third I, could sneak into second I'm, if they if they get if they get it upset over Cincinnati. They they need they need one or two games to go their way. I don't see them making the playoffs at all. I'm sorry. I don't think I don't think they made the playoffs, but I think they have a way. AFC is loaded. Yes. The AFC is loaded out the wazoo this year. Well, I know we've burned up quite a bit of time talking about this AFC North crowd. How about we move west a little bit and start talking about the AFC West? You know, they, they had a boatload of additions this, this offseason. In my opinion right now, the most cutthroat division in, in, in the NFL. So before we start talking about the AFC West a little bit, you've already picked potentially Baltimore to go to the conference championship. Now, without saying a name, do you th- d- does the other team come out of this conference? And th- this, is where I get, this is where I get confused at. I'm, I'm going to say it right now, AFC South does not make it. Okay, so they don't have anybody in at all. They they, they have Indy doesn't get in at all. They they make it. They, they make a playoff. Okay, but that's about. I'm not saying it's Indy making the playoff. I'm just saying the AFC South. They're one team. Hey, we're in the playoffs. Yay! And then the big boys come and like, hey, get out of here. So, speaking about this AFC West, let's just, let's just start off with Denver. You know, the Mile High City adding Russell Wilson. They've got they've they've got some great wide receivers out there. They've got Javante Williams coming back for a second year. I my opinion is I think that they're either going to be fighting for second or third place. So I'd like to say this right now: Denver is the luckiest team when it comes with receiving quarterbacks. First. Peyton Manning's like, yeah, I'll come play with Denver. I'll give you that. And then Russell Wilson's like, Ugh. Well, look, before Russell Wilson went there, they wanted A-Ron. A-Ron. And they were this close. And they were very They hired the offensive coordinator from Green Bay. I don't know what Green Bay did. They said, hey, you can eat these psychedelic shrooms. Well, I think they just offered him that $200 million contract and made him stay. <laughs> but I, I think adding Russell Wilson makes them a playoff contender immediately. It makes if they weren't in the AFC West. Their defense is great, man. I don't. They got one of the. They got. I, I would say they probably have a top five corner on their team. You you you. So you think they make it with a wild card? They would have to be a wild card. Wild card? I I can respect that. It would have to be a wild card, but I think I think they could make it with Russell Wilson. I, I believe they could too. They just need that time to gel and cope. Like, oh yeah. They're, they're well, look a big but, jump. but look what happened to Joey B last year. You know what I'm saying? What was it year two? Uh, Joey. Year three was last year. Has it already been that many years? Wow. Where where's time going right now? <laughs> Somewhere I wish I could go. Oh my god. Gain some back. But but what I'm saying though is like I really think Russell Wilson's too experienced to not get them guys in line that quick. He's too experienced. He's been there, seen it all, won it and lost it. You know what I'm saying? Like I think he could put Denver together really quick, like they want. But speaking of the speaking of another AFC West contender. Let's talk about them old Kansas City Chiefs. They lose Tyreek Hill, but but they gain some pretty cool players. You know, they got Juju, they got Valdez Scanton from Green Bay, and I think that the reason why they were targeting them two players is because of their downfield catching um, that they had with their with their previous teams. They I think I forget what the number was. It was a ridiculous stat, but they they were in the upper half of the league with deep past completions so first of all just to make a little funny joke the only person happy that Juju Smith Schuster in Kansas City right now is Jackson Mahomes I'm, the TikTok yeah. content is going to be cringe 
insane. Them two might, I think they might collab on a few things. Oh, definitely. It'd be beautiful. But back to business, though. <laughs> back to business. It, like, Juju Smith Schuster's not a bad receiver if you look at it through just a football perspective. Juju Smith Schuster is not a bad receiver if there's a definite number one on your team. But there's not a definite number and one. And that's the problem. I mean, you can consider Trav- Travis. Ke- there's only a few tight ends I can honestly say you can consider number one. Travis Kelsey's one of them. And Mark Andrews is the other. And and with that, it's just like. It's two of them. Yeah, that's. But it's two of them. You have Travis Kelsey, who everyone's like. They, Mahomes and Travis Kelsey are peas and carrots at this point. They are. One in the same. So that might open up some room, but you also got to think he is a tight end. But you also have to understand, Tyreek Hill took two to three defenders every play. And, and that's why I feel like... So with, with Tyreek Hill gone, you're e- you're more able to double down on Kelsey because you're not worried about Valdez Scan and you're not worried about Juju. And Hardman's gone right now. Hardman got carted off today in practice. Oh, I did not hear about that. Yeah, a little tidbit for you. Ooh, so so where you have Kansas City right now? Right now, fight at, fighting for two or three. So you, you're you Denver and Kansas City are going to be fighting two and three, neck and neck. Well, the problem <laughs> is is the division is so stacked that a lot of them are going to be fighting for two and three, because I, I'm just saying like the next team we're going to talk about is is Las Vegas. I mean they add they added. Devontae Adams, they have Darren Waller, they have Hunter Renfro. Renfro. I mean, you have Josh Jacobs in the backfield, which is not a he's not a top seven running back, but I would like, ha- like he, to have him. In my I, I would I would have him, on, yeah, because he's a good receiving back as well. But what I guess what I'm getting to is like Derek Carr's got an offense now. Oh, he has you. You are understating just he has an offense. He has the offense. I would, bro, to have Hunter Renfro, one of the top route runners in the league. Oh my god! And then you have Darren Waller, this one of the biggest tight ends in the league. And then you have Devontae Adams, which is one of the biggest and strongest wide receivers in the league. And then to add to that, you have Josh McDaniels, which is an offensive-minded coach that brings that Patriot playbook over that has won how many Super Bowls? And he's been behind how many of them? Uh, Look, too I, many. I think that he had a fluke couple years in Denver, but I think with him going back to New England... And regaining his shit, and then getting another big job, I think this might be the one where Josh McDaniels could make a name for himself, and he could do it pretty quick. He he could. I I see the Raiders. They're the dark horse in that division for me. They're yeah. the dark horse. Well, where do you have them? So, I hate to say this because we said about the other two. All three of them teams, in my opinion, are fighting for the one, two, three. I I. So you have the Chargers winning it. No. We talked about the Broncos, Chiefs. Oh, you said that those Raiders. three. You said that those three are fighting for one, one two, three. two, and three. So you have the Chargers at four. That's how it hurts me to say. I that. have. I'd be honest with you. I think the Chargers could win that division this year because oh. Justin Herbert is in his third year. Third year, and he's got his second year under this coach, which now he knows the offense. He's got Eckler. He's got. Uh, they just re-signed Mike Williams, which I'm not a big, big fan of, but dude is big. He's big, and, and, dude, he, and he's and an easy target to hit. He's a big target to hit downfield. So, I, with the additions that they did on defense, I think that they could win that division. See, and that that's where I'm going to stray away from you for but, a little but, bit. But therefore, again, that's why I say Las Vegas could win the division. So, I'm not a big fan of Khalil, the Khalil Mack pickup. Khalil Mack, he is... Up there. When was the last time we really heard Khalil Mack doing Khalil Mack things? Early. Third er, third year in Chicago. Early in Chicago. Raiders. Like, that's when you're like, oh, Khalil Mack's that guy. Yeah. Last two, three years, it's just been like, oh, there's Khalil Mack. He, but could that could that just be because of the team that he was on? No, he had a stout defense. I get that. But yeah. you know how, like, okay, so... If you played for a team that you knew was going to be sub-500 like on a yearly base, you would kind of get wore out. But they weren't. For last year and possibly year before, they are like, okay, 
we, we might be sub 500. That's what I'm saying. Like right, I'm, I'm right whenever it was coming up to an end of that that little run that they kind of had. And I, I'm saying I'm saying the year like, like, the year before last is like, like, I'm talking about talking about the the Chargers is ready. You have you you've you've. Also, they just re-signed um, the safety there for a four-year contract. Dude, that defense is such a high-paid defense. If they don't come in first or second in this division this year, you're talking about a coach might get fired. I'm, I'm telling you this right now with Khalil Mack before we get a little bit deeper into this. Let's go. <clears throat> From 2015 to 2018, double-digit sacks. 15, 11, 10 and a half, 12 and a half. Okay. The next three years, 2019, 2020, 2021, eight and a half, nine and six. So, uh, you la- see, you'd say last year was the fall off year. No, but, I'm saying but 2019. Two, but, but you're going from 12 and a half to eight and a half. That, that's a noticeable progression, uh, decrease in production. Yeah. And they still had Marcus uh, Goldman, Ro- Roquan Smith, Eddie Jackson, like they had a, a squad on that side of the ball. If I were to if I were to take a wild guess about the AFC West, and this is just before we roll in, roll to the next, but if I had to go one through four, I'm going Las Vegas, Denver, Kansas City, Chargers as my one, two, three, four. I'm going to switch, in my opinion, Denver and Kansas City. So I got you're... Las Vegas, Kansas City, Denver. Chargers. I just think I think KC regresses more than people are thinking. I I don't know, man. Depends. On, well, depends on how long Nico Hartman's down. And then also you also got to think of Andy Reid. But enough with that loaded division. Let's take a break with all that just cutthroatness and go to the nice easy AFC South. And I'm going to start off <laughs> with a team that's fighting. They are fighting for that number one overall pick, the Houston Texans. Like. Gosh almighty. I wasn't sure if you were going to start with Jacksonville. They no, won, no, the, I got, they won I got, the last two years. They, I got, I got Isn't that funny? Else. Two teams out of the same division are fighting for that first pick. Uh, no, not in the same division. I don't think Jacksonville is going to fight for number one overall this year. But that, that's that's Atlanta and Texas. But um, <laughs> the quarterback situation, I couldn't think of anything worse for an organization if they weren't so you, taking. You just don't like Davis Mills. I I don't like Davis Mills. I don't like Kyle Allen, and I don't like Jeff Driscoll. What a! I'm not saying the backups. I'm just saying I'm not saying I'm the biggest fan of Davis Mills. But what I am saying is, if an organization likes you, and and they put pieces around you and make things happen for you, you know what I'm saying? Like you're you're you are more apt to succeed. And then, but Houston, their running back situation, it's. Manageable. It's eh, with Damian Pierce, Marlon Mack, and then you have old man Rex Burkhead. I don't even know why he's still in the league. None of those guys are gonna matter after Damian Pierce totes that rock week one. <laughs> 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 but the wide receivers, I'm not gonna lie, their wide receivers are kind of a little saucy with Brandon Cooks, yep. Nico Collins, and John Mechie the third. But we also have to understand that Mechie the third is not gonna be there this year. Oh no, he's not gonna be there this year at all. That's that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm saying this right now. Houston Texan, bottom of the barrel, bottom of the barrel in the AFC, I, I, not just the I, AFC South. No, 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 I say they they come in fourth in that division, but I I really like them in three years. Three years after they with all these draft picks they got from from Cleveland and everything, you're talking about they could do what they did the first time whenever they got Deshaun Watson and, and uh, Hopkins and JJ. But I'm just saying, like, that team that they had was fighting for the playoffs every year. Oh, they were fighting for the playoffs until fucking Bullet Bill O'Brien was like, oh, you're, you're, you're trading me a bag of potato chips for DeAndre Hopkins? I mean... I'll take it. <laughs> look, the only thing Jacksonville did better than Houston was they got rid of their Bill O'Brien faster. Uh, <laughs> Urban Meyer was worse than Bill O'Brien. But speak... I'm done with speaking about poverty in a sense. <laughs> Let me go to a couple teams that everyone expects to mainly win the division. First one, I want to talk about Tennessee. Gosh, I hate Tennessee so much, but damn it, Art, they got a little squad on them. First of all, Ryan Tannehill, not too high on him. He's a game manager at best. 
if you if you have to win with him holding the ball, I say six out of ten times you don't win. I agree with that. Six out of ten times you it's just but they got that man. That that man that just comes from Yuley, Florida, Yule. Derek Henry just That dude that that dude's a tree. He is built different. He is built different, and I don't understand why. I don't understand because he's a video him. game character, bro. <laughs> Shit. Madden was like, you know what? Let's let's bring out one of our characters. All of the jokes and all that. They did they did lose their AJ Brown to Philadelphia. Good for him making money and all that. I'm happy, but they did pick up Robert Woods. I say I mean, that's I mean, I mean, Bobby Trees is good. Coming off an ACL. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I like Robert Woods. Age. There, there, there we go. He's older now, you know. So I mean, he's got probably got like one or two years left. I just Tennessee, they went from being a number one to like a number three really quick. They went from number one to two, actually having to fight for two. Actually, that's what I'm saying. Because of of, of getting rid of AJ Brown. And get rid. And I mean, I understand Julio was a one year, but getting rid of those two big bodies. Who else you got to throw to? I mean, Julio wasn't really a factor in Tennessee. Let's be honest with ourselves. Like we love ourselves some Julio, but I mean, he caught him. He caught some big ones and some big moments for him in some certain games last year. <laughs> yeah, but Julio's getting up there where it's just like how Randy Moss was. I'm with you. I'm with you. But the number one team overall that most people see coming out the AFC South is the Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis Colts had a big upgrade in quarterback from Carson. Let me choke away the playoffs against Jacksonville Wentz. To Matt Ryan, let me choke away the Super Bowl to Tom Brady. They got possibly- Isn't that funny you say that? Think about what you think about what you said just a few minutes ago. Denver gets all these great quarterbacks. And somehow Indy gets all these trash quarterbacks. It's the curse of Andrew Luck. Is that is that it? It's the curse of Andrew Luck. I, I hate to say it. But Indianapolis should be a good squad. I see it, I see it a 10 1 team. <clears throat> Jonathan Taylor, possibly third best running back in the league. I say they win that division. Oh, e- easily. Yeah, I hate to say that. Pittman Jr. is going to have a year. Oh, Michael Pittman Jr. Me personally, I might pick him up if he's there. He's a starter. He, he's a wide receiver one. Oh, yeah, but. Like, His hands have gotten better and better. Oh, exactly. And he had a couple big games last but year. But that's what I'm saying. I think this is the year Pittman Jr. goes off. We got Matt Ryan. Pittman Jr.'s got to go off. Don't got to, but I can I can see it popping off for him. And they got a good offensive line, stout defense, and a weak division. Yeah. All they really got to worry about is Tennessee and possibly Jacksonville. And that's if Jacksonville shocks the world like they did in 2017. Yeah, and I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I could see it happening, but I don't see it happening. And then speaking about the number one team in the yard. My heart, your heart, everyone's heart. The Jacksonville Jaguars wouldn't go that far. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they're they're like they're like the the brother that no one really Look, wanted. I think Jacksonville could be the number two team in this division. Yeah, I know they, that sounds crazy, but with the money that they sent, spent and the acquisitions that they received, I think that they could honestly be the number two team in the AFC South this year. I, I know we talked about it earlier with the um, fantasy football stuff. Trevor Lawrence looked good in preseason. I'm going to keep digressing on this. Preseason is preseason, though. You don't know what you get until week one. You're, then, you're so correct about that, but you got to understand, to be the number one overall pick at that position and to be the whole quarterback of that decade, if you will, or that half that, decade. That, dra- that, that draft. Well, that draft anyways, but I'm just saying like that he, he was considered the, the, the quarterback the, of the future. The next Peyton Manning. The next style Peyton Manning or, or Andrew Luck, just smart-wise. And he's got a rocket arm and just knows how to manage the game. What, in my opinion, what screwed him up last year, we all agreed on this, was Urban Meyer. Yeah, he, Ur- he, he almost made Jacksonville go to London. Oh, for sure. And I would have I'm glad we got rid of Urban Meyer. I feel like our court coach now is a better coach. But they take they take the right steps in the future. I see that wholeheartedly. Can't complain at all. But I see the division breaking down. Indianapolis, 
Tennessee, Jacksonville, Houston. How do you see it? I see it as Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Tennessee, Houston. Jacksonville does well against Tennessee. A little fun fact. And Jacksonville does well against Indianapolis. A little fun fact. We haven't actually... Jacksonville has not won a full series against Tennessee since like 2014. And that's what I'm saying. If you could split the series with, with Tennessee and sweep Indy, you could win that division. No. Because you guys just you guys have that luck over Indy, and I don't know how. No, it's when Indy comes over here. Well, even if you split that. If you split that series and you split Tennessee and you swept Houston, I mean, bro. You, That's Jack, already four wins. Jacksonville could be doing well. That's already four wins. We're doing better, baby. We are. We hit the draft. I'm, I'm showing you some praise in that <laughs> underdeveloped, you know, section of the AFC. You know, uh, we're 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 like the daycare. They're yeah, like, oh, like, look at these cute guys. Yeah, that's section. But we're the Bills kryptonite. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, I mean, hey, I we're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, talking about the Bills, let's move over to the AFC East. Um, I guess I mean, I, I guess we could start with an easy one. You know, the no name Jets. The who? I mean, I mean the New York Jets or the New Jersey, Jets, however we want to call it, the the, I, the I Jets. They, I thought they were called the Moms. Yeah, with yeah, <laughs> yeah, with old Zach Wilson. Look, I it, here's my thing with the Jets is it's the Jets until proven otherwise. See, it, I, I'm sorry, but like Zach Wilson already won my MVP this year. I'm already casting my vote. MVP. MVP. And it's not for his play on the field. Of catching moms? It, it's that play off the field, son. <laughs> ah, ah, look, ah. look I'm, I'm just saying, like, even with some of the... I like I like the rookie class that they brought in. Yeah, I do too. But that class isn't going to be nothing until next year. Earliest. I, I, I just... Earliest. I don't see the Jets ever doing anything in I don't either. I, I, I see them wasting a lot of great potential. I, I see them trading away potential to better teams. I, I agree with you on that. But I, until proven otherwise, I can't. I really have nothing positive to say about the Jets until they start winning games. Because I mean, they have Elijah Moore, they have Brees Hall, a rookie running back. They have Carter, which was uh, you know what year two running back now, you know what I'm saying or year three running back. I think they both came out. Him and Javante came out the same year last year, wasn't it? They were rookies last year? Yeah. So what I'm saying is you got two rookie running backs. You got a year two running back and a year one. Um, you got two year uh, year two and a year one wide receiver. So they're, they're going to be bottom of the they're, they're, they're going to be the bottom of the barrel. Due to inexperience. So, moving, so that's, that's going to be my fourth pick in the AFC East. Going to my third in the AFC East is going to be the uh, New England Patriots. I think they come in third this year. I don't think they get that second spot just because of the acquisitions in South Florida. Um, I know they picked up. They really didn't pick up much in the off season they to didn't make even them pick up a coordinator. No, so I, that's what I'm saying. Like I, but you just can't count Bill Belichick out. I hate that man. I like. I'm not the biggest good... fan of him either, being a Bills fan, but. You can't count the man out. He's like Nick Saban. Like, are 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 you are you a fan of Star Wars or anything? Not a huge fan. But you know about Star but Wars. But I know right? I know about it. He, that man, like, did you see the last movie that came out? A no. little off topic, but it's about to come back circle. Okay. You, but you seen the last movie? I haven't seen the last movie. <laughs> well, a little spoiler alert. But Palpatine comes back. Bill Belichick is the Palpatine of the NFL. Ha! <laughs> Just I feel off anger. Bro, I don't know how he does it. Like he takes kids from like Division two schools, and wins Super Bowls. He takes people like us and like, hey, you're playing wide receiver. Yeah. I don't know football. You will. You will. <laughs> you will. Just follow my way. Like, look at Matt Jones. Like he he's built like a like a tow truck driver. <laughs> Winning games. Winning games. Like going. Yeah, yeah I just. Good for you. So Bill. I. I think them in Miami fight for the two spot. Them in Miami. I think them in Miami fight for the two spot. And and I the only reason I think that Bill Belichick could get that two spot is with their running running game. Yeah, I do like the Their offensive Harris. line is always stout and it's hard as hell to stop their running game. You should know that. So 
Um, moving on to Miami. Bro, as much as I hate to admit this, man, their wide receiver core is pretty nasty. They loaded up on weapons. Bro. Well, they loaded up on one with Hill. Well, that was their offensive weapon. I mean, they did they did get the offensive line. You know what I'm saying? And they did re-sign Mike Gusecki. So, I guess what I'm trying to say, though, is between Gusecki, Waddle, Hill. I mean, Waddle and Hill are fast as shit. I don't think we see deep passes this year. Oh, and then they... Um, I think it's a bunch of Alabama passes, a bunch of 15-yard cuts, and let the receiver do the rest. And then they also picked up that uh, 49ers running back. Oh, yeah, Raheem Mostert. Yeah, Raheem Mostert. Yeah, and they got I, Sonny I couldn't Michelle. Remember which one they had like fifty running backs. They uh they also picked up Sonny Michelle from uh, the Rams. Yeah, so so I mean they're they're putting together, they have the pieces in place now with their defense that's already pretty scary in itself. They're putting together a decent team. I just I think they'll they'll come in second and they might get a wild card spot. So you 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 think Tua can make it to the playoffs? I think he can make it to the playoffs, you but think, I just don't think he, he question, wins. You think it saves his job? Because we all it'll know definitely no, it'll definitely save his job. If he made it to the playoffs, he's guaranteed he got a job. Guaranteed he got a job. You can't. I mean, come on, man. I, it's how many? I mean, it's very. I know it's happened, but it's not that often that like if you make it to the playoffs, you, you're going to get cut. Tim Tebow. I was literally thinking that, but that was a completely different situation. Yeah, that though. was that was a once in a lifetime. But situation. that was a whole a coaching staff change and everything that made Peyton that happen. Manning. Peyton Manning had made that happen. Yeah, but I, I like Miami in this. I think they squeak by with a wild card if they do. It's just how Tua plays. If Tua could play like he did in Alabama, well, I mean, according to Tyree Hill, he's the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes. Uh, <laughs> uh. I mean, that's out of Tyreek's mouth. Well, speaking about mouth, let's get let's get over with these dirty ass next ones that you want to talk about. Well, th- I mean, in my, in my in my beautiful dreams, it would be the next Super Bowl winning team. <laughs> but you know, we we got a full season to go before we even think about talking about that. I it, the Buffalo Bills man have got it in all phases. I mean, if you've watched any other preseason, just from some of the guys that they brought in from draft and some of the guys that they brought in in free agency, all three to four strings of that defense over this past week against the Colts was insane. Oh, it was I, it, it, beautiful. I, you got a punter now that can punt it the whole field, not just like 30, 40, 50 yards, like the whole field. You got a quarterback that can literally throw it three quarters of the field if he wanted to. I mean, Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo's been in a spot I've never seen before. Where happiness. It, uh, just pure happiness. <laughs> you have you have a quarterback. You have not one wide receiver, but two, I feel like, really good wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Isaiah McKenzie is basically like our little Tyreek Hill because he, he's just like all over the – he's he's not as fast, like fast as Tyreek Hill, but, yeah, he's like our little crackhead on the field. Like the funniest, funniest shit, but, like, fast as fuck. I think – if we made some changes on the defense, I say take Tremaine Edmonds out of middle linebacker, and I say move him over to the outside, move Matt Milano to the inside to be a spy because he knows how to catch the ball. Tremaine Edmonds is a hitter. Oh, yeah. he, he Put him on the longer. edge to where he can wrap around the side and fuck someone's day up. I still think Buffalo wins this division for a third year in a row, but I just... They're stacked, man. So, this is the first time ever, bro. They've been stacked. They got Von Miller. They got uh, Tredavious White coming back. They picked their first round pick was a corner. You know what I'm saying? Their their sixth round pick as a corner was looking damn good. So I mean, it, they're in a sweet spot right now. He, so here's my opinions on Buffalo. First of all, the Von Miller, I feel like that's a little overrated, but he did just win a Super Bowl, so I can't really say much. But if you if if you look at it from that perspective, yes. And, but I think the way Buffalo's looking at it though is they got two fresh, fresh, fresh defensive ends that they picked up in the draft last year. So if you pick up a guy that's won two Super Bowls and knows how to do the job tremendously and holds camps for it, why not just sign him to a big contract if you got a little bit of extra money and to, just to solidify that defense and bring in that championship attitude that's already been to the thing and won and it all. Then here's I got two more. So OBJ. He is highly linked. I hope we don't get him. 
I, I hope we don't because it's gonna fuck Gabe Davis up, man. And I and I feel like if we fuck Gabe Davis over again, he's, no, he's I, I feel out. like Gabe Davis has number two. OBJ is your slot. The older slot. That would be fucking nuts. That 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 if if Buffalo if you treated it that way, that would be like it would be nuts. But the, and you could drop Jamison Crowder right now. Oh, I'm, what has Jamison Crowder been since Washington? But. And here's my thing. Remember how I talked about uh, Baltimore going to the AFC Championship? Yes. I believe it's the Buffalo Bills or one of them three teams from the West against them. And if Buffalo makes it against Baltimore, Buffalo's going to the Super Bowl. I'm calling it right now. I think so, too. And I'm not a Buffalo fan. I'm, I'm a down, dirty Duval fan. Look, and, and look, I, I've lived in Florida for a very long time, and I'm a diehard Bills fan. But I, I just I have a sweet spot for Jacksonville somewhere tucked deep deep inside of me because I guess I lived here when they were created here. You know what I'm saying? I, and when I they lived, were somewhat decent. I lived relatively in that rough area, so you got kind of a sweet spot for them if you've been in this Cause, area since they've been created. Because it's one of them things like it's like go get them. It's it's like you have a kid who's not really athletic, yeah. but you're just like go get them, champ. Yeah. And it's like, Dad, I struck out three times. At least you swung the bat. We tried, buddy. <laughs> At we least tried. You swung the bat. But no, I, I'm with you though. I feel like Buffalo could be that team in the AFC Championship. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying? Because like last year, we got kind of we 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 messed that game up. But that was a divisional round. The year before, we were in the championship game and lost. So I mean, it, I don't think it's a regression. I think it's. I think I think Josh Allen's Bad pissed matchup. off. I think Josh Allen's pissed off enough now. To where I don't think anybody's going to get in the way because in this whole offseason, he's been dogged on by Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Mahomes all offseason because he did all them golf matches with them. Had to hear all the fucking trash talk back toward him because he's the only one out of them four that hasn't won it. And here, here's what I got to say, though. Buffalo's going to the Super Bowl. I'm calling it right now. Tape it. Do whatever. But it's going to be Buffalo. And we'll get to the NFC in a later week. But, oh, we're going to leave that sizzler for uh, the next one? Oh, yeah. And I got my NFC already picked, but Ooh. we're going we're gonna to leave that. But it's going to be Buffalo and whoever. I think I could be wrong. I'm not a genie by any means, but I feel like Buffalo beats Baltimore. I like that. I say if I say it's either Buffalo, Baltimore in the championship game because I think the AFC West is going to beat the shit out of themselves. But if it isn't, it'll be Buffalo versus Vegas. In the AFC Championship game in I, Buffalo. I totally agree with that. But we we talked enough about the gridiron already. We've talked about men with pads, sports, and all that. We're just going to touch on a little bit stuff that is near and dear to my heart. It's a very family-friendly sport. And that is the ultimate fighting championship, that octagon. And this Saturday, we have an amazing event, UFC 278. You have the men, the men's pound-for-pound Number one, Kamara Usman fighting against a guy that many people could think like, hey, this is the guy to actually give him a give him a struggle with Leon Edwards. Cause they, they're polar opposites in a sense. When they first fought. When they first fought, it was Leon Edwards was the striker versus Kamara Usman, the wrestler. Now watching Kamara Usman come up a little bit more. We see that man got some dummies. I know, but Leon Edwards says that uh, it's the perfect time to fight Usman. He says his body's breaking down. And I don't... Usman is a menace. And we just... I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole card. I'm just going to touch the top three matchups. But I feel like Kamara Usman beats him. Unanimous decision. I mean, he rebuttaled it. He came, he came back to Edwards and said that uh, he's going in there for the finish. He's... Go and that is a scary come on. When he says he's going for someone's head, he goes for someone's head. The ne the co-main event, <clears throat> you got Paulo, the Eraser Costa, and then you got Luke Rockhold. You got your newer, newish middleweight in Paulo Costa, who, besides Izzy, and I can't think of the other guy right now, he missed weight in his last fight and still lost to Marvin Vittori. He he's been he's been dusting people. That's what he's known for. He's known as that Brazilian striker to you I hit you, you hit ground, my hand gets raised. But you also got Luke Rockhold. Luke Rockhold 
former middleweight champion. He he is very skillful, but he is a little bit on the older side. He does have some. He does have a few more matches under his belt though, too. So I mean that that a little bit more experience could help him out. I, I feel like Paulo Costa gets him out in the second round TKO. Luke Rockhold has a glass chin. Oh he, really? He's got knocked out by Michael Bisbee, by Jan, Blavo, uh, Jan Blahovich. Oh, so that thing's just basically put together by like splinters. Oh, by by gorilla gr- gorilla glue. <laughs> and then my fight that I'm looking forward to, you got Jose Aldo. Ooh, the bantamweight division, huh? Oh, yeah. Jose Aldo, near and dear to my heart. He was the featherweight king for a while. Dropped down to bantamweight. Now he looks amazing. And then you, I'm going to butcher this name. I'm sorry, but Morab the Vali. I'm not even going. I'm just going to call him a rab. <clears throat> I feel. I feel like Jose gets him. Jose's the bigger fighter. He, he. I just. I just like Jose in this fight. More technical striker. Has has some ground game. Just a beautiful mix. And I feel like this is another step for Jose to go out back to that bandwidth championship. Okay. So you. Okay. I, okay. Because he lost the Piotr Jan. Uh, when uh, they first fought for the Bantamweight Championship, I feel like he goes back to try try to become a two division champion. I can see that. But other than that, that's this whole card is stacked. It's going to be an amazing, amazing card. I have fun talking tonight, Jared. How do you feel about tonight? Man, I had a blast. You know, we got we got a bunch of cool information out there. I hope it helps some people out. You know, if it doesn't, oh fucking well. You know, I'm glad I could just spit some shit and, and I, and, you know, it didn't work for you. Exactly. But I'm shooting for the part that it did work for you. And uh, being as that I've won three chips in the past three years, I'm going to say that my information could be decently valuable. Yeah, you ain't going to win chip this year, buddy, in this eight man league. Well, I promise you, I'll probably win it in my 10 man for the fourth year in a row. But that's all the time we have for today, folks. I hope you had an amazing time with us. And always remember read that playbook. And we appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Always like, subscribe, and comment. Boom! At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876 including t-shirts long sleeve shirts phone cases mugs blankets pillows towels and even shower curtains go to sportshistorynetwork.com row number one for access to the full row one catalog and for gallery prints and gift items plus get a 15 percent discount off all prints on the row one pictorium gallery with coupon code shn15 follow the link on the show notes